people in that nature. Yeah. Are there out? Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our regularly scheduled city council meeting. It is Tuesday, March 19th, 2024. I would like to call this meeting to order. We are going to begin by rising for the Pledge of Allegiance, and we will stay standing for words of inspiration by our own Pastor Bob Morrissey from the church at Clawson. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice Pastor Thank you. I'd like to thank Mayor Paula for coming to the church at Clawson a few weeks ago. We hosted Scout Sunday, and uh, we had the whole troop there, and we had a chili cook-off with them when we recruited her to be the judge. So here's the official invite. We'll get the whole city council there next year to be judges for the chili cook-off. So... Um, I'm going to say a quick word of prayer. Father, we thank you for our city, and I thank you for um, each and every person who's here serving, and then for the people behind me who are invested into their city and care about what's happening here, and people watching online. I just pray you'd bless our city, and um, I pray that um, you would give us good leadership and give us good wisdom and uh, and guidance and direction. I think of Jesus' words as he said in the Lord's Prayer, Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And it's my prayer that your will would be done here in Clawson as it is in heaven. And I know what that would look like. It would be a place of peace and joy and love and hope and gentleness, and kindness, and uh, I desperately would love to see that be the place here where everybody was treated with love, and decency, and kindness, and uh, and so I pray for these things. Pray that you bless tonight's meeting, and um, bless each and every, every person that's a part of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. Roll call, please, Michelle. Councilmember Anderson? Here. Councilmember Binkowski? Here. Mayor Milan? Here. Mayor Pro Tem Moffitt? Present. Councilmember Shepherd? Here. Thank you. Um, item number five on our agenda is approval of the agenda, and I would like someone to make a motion, please, mm -hmm. to amend our agenda. Uh, we, due to circumstances, if we could eliminate item D, item G, and item 16 from the agenda, it would be great if someone would make that motion. So moved. Support. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Michelle. Councilor Anderson? Yes. Councilor Binkowski? Yes. Mayor Milan? Yes. Mayor Botan Moffitt? Yes. Councilor Shepard? Yes. Thank you. Our next item is public comment. If you're in the audience this evening and you'd like to speak to anything that we have on our agenda tonight, we ask that you come forward to the podium. We'll allot you three minutes. We ask that you speak. State your name and address. Is there anyone here this evening who would like to speak for public comment? Good evening. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. I'm sorry. Could you repeat the amendment again? Uh, which, which items are? The ones we removed? Yes. Um, item D, which is consideration of the first reading on an ordinance for to amend the City of Clawson Code of Ordinance, Chapter 56, Special Events. Item G, consideration of Ethics Board's nomination and appointment of for um, a term that will expire in 2026. And then item 16, which is consideration of going into closed session um, on an item. And the reason we're removing those items, two of those items, is because we don't have a city wait, attorney. Wait a second. Something. We, we removed 9G? We did. Yeah, that's why... Paused. I was confused. Move to uh, rescind re the last vote. Support. Okay. Would you like an explanation? Or would you like to have a conversation? Other, I mean, I don't see why we need the city manager here to appoint someone to the ethics board. 
No, uh, he, that was not removed because of the um, sit, the city manager is here, first of all. <laughs> the city clerk, the, I think you're starting, referring to the city attorney. The city attorney is not here this evening. The reason that item was uh, removed is because we do not have a vacant seat on that board. There's, there's a vacant seat that expired in 2023. No, there's a seat that expired in 2023, which does not equate into a vacancy. If people want to continue to serve, we allow them to continue to serve. That person has been contacted, and they are willing to continue to serve. Therefore, we do not have a vacancy. Well, it's 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 a vacancy as the point of expiration. Ex, um, expiration. So, I will continue with my motion. Okay. I'm confused. Should I go sit down? Now? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you continue with public comment, and we'll come back to this item? No, be I right. made a motion, Miss. Um, we are in the middle of public comment, and I am calling the meeting, and I'm saying that we're going to continue with public comment. And I understand you have a concern here, a little late to the table on it, but that's okay. We'll go back and address it. But we're going to allow public I'm sorry, comment. Sorry, I just finish. didn't expect you to try to try to uh, trick me into. Um, Removing my my item from the agenda. There so really, was no I trick. guess I had a little more trust and confidence in you, Mayor Pallon. Wow, thank you. Thanks. I'm glad you had that. But I don't I appreciate anymore. that. But we're going to table this conversation for a moment. We're going to allow public comment, and then we will come back to this. So, Mr. Hara, if you'd like to continue. I, I'm sorry. Don't be sorry. It's okay. That. Um, my my question, uh, as it happened, did have to do with that item. So I don't know if it's on the agenda or not anymore. Um, but how about we just talk about this? I just wanted to say thank you to Mr. Shepard for uh, answering my questions earlier about the trees and your service to uh, the community by looking at all of those trees and supporting DPW and that monumental task. Um, I appreciate that. And then uh, as it is on this agenda, um, there's talk about the additional monies for camera inspections for DPW, I think. Um, and I just wanted to know if the public would ever have access to those videos or if it would only be for the uh, for the DPW officials. It's a lot of money that could potentially go to the, um, uh, it, it could go to fixing sewers and, instead of just photographing them. So I was just curious um, if that would ever be available to other members of the community. Thank you so much for all that you do. I Thank you very much. Is there anyone else for public comment? We will close public comment, and I believe Councilman Rubinkowski has a question on the table. Would you like to restate your question? My motion was to rescind the um, approval of the agenda, including the rescissions. And I supported it. Did we have a second? Yep. We did? Yep. Okay. Do we want to have conversation about this? Sure. Well, it's, it, we always have conversation about motions. That's yeah. normal practice. Sure. I would suggest that the opportunity to discuss item G would be if the... The motion was to amend was rescinded, and then if it was left on the agenda subsequently. So that would be the time to talk about item G, I would guess, would be the opportunity. So the motion right now, the discussion should be about rescinding the vote. Great, she's saying yes. <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have our parli parliamentary yeah, that's here. Motion. But yeah. That's fine. Uh, okay. Yeah. So uh, anyone so else? Let's have some discussion then, right? Well, we have to re rescind. Rescind the agenda to discuss it. Or rescind the vote to change the agenda in order to discuss item number G. <clears throat> Isn't there yeah. discussion on the motion? Isn't there discussion on the motion after it's been seconded, though? And that's, that's what, what I thought we were doing right yeah, now. And right? he seconded, so yes. now the discussion would be on the actual motion by Councilmember Binkowski to rescind the vote to amend the agenda. So in, in, as far as the discussion, your uh, motivation to rescind? Sure. Is there sure. discussion? It's because I wanted, yes. I, I saw, no, I had received text earlier tonight, just to, for the public knows, I had received information saying we are going to rescind uh, the consideration because of the absence of the um, city attorney. We we're going to rescind um, um, uh, the uh, second, the first reading of the ordinance, and also the closed session, and that's all I thought we were doing. And I'm sorry, I wasn't paying 100% attention. 
when so, that motion was made. Okay, yeah. but just for the record, I did not run something past you. We, I stated all three of them. I said two of them had to do with the city manager. Well, with well the, the city, city manager attorney, didn't, didn't with run With the city past attorney this. not being yes. here, which is fine. And the reason um, this nomination was pulled is because the person who's currently in that seat would like to continue in that seat. Okay. So that was the reason. And I never like to cause... I feel bad for this person that's on our agenda today because of this situation. So if you guys would, what's your pleasure? Are we voting to rescind? The, we need to place a vote, right? So the vote will be whether or not we re-vote on all three items because you grouped them all together. We can do that, and then we can go back and address. It's to rescind the motion. It's to rescind your motion yeah. to amend the agenda. Right. I understand. That's yeah. what I just said. Yeah. Okay, Michelle. Councilmember Binkowski. Yes. Mayor Milan? No. Mayor Pro Tem Moffitt? Yes. Councilmember Shepard? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Okay. Now we've rescinded no. that. So Madam now Mayor, we need another start. motion. I have the floor. I will make a motion that we remove item D, item G, and item 16. In support. Discussion. I'm sorry, can you repeat your motion, please? Item D, item G, and item 16 will be removed from the agenda. We now have an understanding of why those items are being removed. Yeah. Well, I supported, so. I mean, any Do we have any thoughts? Anyone have discuss. any thoughts? So again, let's, it looks like item G is the issue at hand. So the term expired. Person is desired to continue to serve. Is that? I'll be honest. I'm. Brennis is not here, unfortunately, to consult. So, I know it's customary that if a seat expires but nobody else fills it, it they just kind of continue on. Sure. Can that go on indefinitely, or how does that work? If it expires, then they would have to be reappointed to that position, and their reappointment would be a council decision. And so we have someone nominated to fill the seat, which is expired and has not been reappointed yet, therefore seems vacant to me. Um, and it's very clear that appointments to the ethics board are um, the entire council's opportunity to nominate. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's what's taking place in item G. So I think we need to give it its turn on the agenda. So past practice is people serve in a seat until they are replaced, right? And I, my concern over this was uh, someone made a nomination, but did anyone verify that we actually had a vacancy? And a vacancy meaning not an expiration date, right? Because that's, they're not the same things. Madam Mayor, with all due respect, you replaced members of the DDA earlier or last year who had been serving and who would wish to continue to serve. So let's let's end this nonsense of that the person can continue forever if they want. It is our decision who to appoint to every board. Mr. Binghowski, it I did make that move with much thought and contemplation and you're right, I did, and I had the authority to do so. And I'm not trying to take the authority of this. I didn't nominate anyone. I could think of 10 people I would nominate for this, this seat if I thought it were vacant. I did not. We have found that it is not vacant. We have a person who's willing to serve. Point manager. of order. Excuse me. The seat is Excuse vacant. Excuse me, Mr. Okay. Aker. Yes. So, just to provide additional clarification. There are, you are right, you have the authority, and I'm not saying anything that you don't know, to appoint to any other council, any other board of commission. Ethics is any council member. Council member Binkowski did provide communication to us that he was making a nomination. He also provided within that communication, and the clerk has the communication to share with the council, that he was, that he is, he indicated that she is not, does not want to be reappointed. Well, in conversation, we came to the conclusion that, oh, that we don't necessarily have any communication from her, so we reached out directly to her, and she indicated that she 
No one talked to her about this, as was apparently the claim in the communication from Mr. Brinkowski, and she would like to continue to serve. Please, I, I, would, I would ask that the city manager did not put a word in my mouth. I just asked the, 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 the words that I said, is, the, the, the words that I wrote in my email was, it was my understanding that she did not wish to, to um, be reappointed. And you understood that how? I, it's from what I from what I understood from conversations with various people in the community. So, so, so you have that understanding, and, I, so and hey, if my mistake, if my understanding was mistaken, fine. But I would still like to proceed with my um, nomination. Mr. Baker, can the city clerk please read the communication for clarity? Uh, yes, Michelle, please. It said, "Dear Mr. Raker, I would like to nominate Eric." Erica Kuban to the Board of Ethics as is permitted under Clawson Ordinance Section 2-311G1B. It is my understanding that Annie Fenton's term has expired and that she does not desire reappointment. It is also my understanding that Ms. Kuban submitted her application to the city clerk this week. Please add Ms. Kuban's nomination to the agenda for the March 19, 2024 City Council meeting. Of course, do not hesitate to reach out to me with any questions or issues. So we're in a, we're in a, we need to ensure, we worried about a lot of things about appointments. One thing we need to ensure is this portion, I suppose, to ensure that this doesn't happen again, because now we have two very qualified, very interested parties interested in serving, and we're putting both of them in an awkward position because of positioning or whatever and, the reason is. And Mayor, I would kindly suggest that we can have this discussion under 9G in the agenda today. You could suggest that. Yes, you could. In which case, we would leave the, we would take it off the agenda. For There's a motion on the table to remove all three of them right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, there is a motion on the table to remove all three. May we have a roll call vote, please? Mayor Milan? Yes. I mean, no, no, do not. Yes, remove all three. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I'm confused. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Moffitt? No. Councilmember Shepard? No. Councilmember Anderson? No. Councilmember Binkowski? No. Okay, well, we'll keep item G on our uh, agenda. Madam Mayor, I move that uh, we amend the agenda to remove item D in 16. Support. Yeah. Did everyone understand what item D and item yeah. 16 is so we can move forward on this? Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay, roll call, please. Mayor Pro Tem Moffitt? Yes. Councilmember Shepard? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Binkowski? Yes. Mayor Juan? Yes. Okay, we've agenda, amended our agenda again. We have removed items D and 16, and we will remain, we will have item G on the agenda moving forward. Uh, public comments are closed. We'll move on to proclamations and presentations. We have an introduction of Brandon Birch, our new communications and development specialist. Mr. Raker. Good evening, uh, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, I'm happy to introduce Brandon Birch to the Clawson community as our new communications and development specialist. Brandon, come up to the podium. Uh, Brandon joins our team with 10 years of experience in the communi communications field with a Master of Arts from Wayne State University. In this new role, Brandon will spearhead various communication initiatives on behalf of the city, including, but certainly not limited to, managing the social media presence, overseeing website operations, managing the development of digital and hard copy newsletters, and general community education campaigns. We look forward to the immediate impact Brandon can make on our efforts to engage with the community. Um, as Brandon is here, he would uh, like to provide some words to uh, the council and the community. Thank you. Good evening, council. Good evening. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Well, from my, uh, I want to say uh, now seven, six, seven days of uh, being here, um, I have uh, gone on to do a few things uh, within the city of Clawson. The first thing that I have uh, noticed and analyzed was the uh, city website. Now, um, the first thing that sparked my attention was the uh, navigation of the website. Sometimes it may be a bit confusing, but I believe with a little bit of tweaking, um, instead of a complete overhaul, that uh, we should find a nice medium for residents to be able to uh, access city services a lot quicker. Um, I have been in contact with uh, Revised, and uh, excuse my uh, voice, I'm overcoming a cold, a common cold. 
Um, but we have been in close contact with Revise, and uh, from what I've seen so far, every ticket that we put in with them, um, as far as a website issue, they have been uh, on top of it pretty quickly. So that's uh, one thing about the website that I, I pretty much uh, like about the webmaster that we currently have. Um, the next thing, um, <clears throat> the uh, email um, service that we uh, currently work with, we work with a company called MailChimp, and um, we have unfortunately reached uh, over 500 subscribers. So now we are currently looking for a uh, an alternative or a better uh, packaging uh a pricing uh, package that uh, will better fit our needs uh, as far as our subscribers in order for us to uh, continue on with our email subscriber system. Um, as now when people sign up uh, to our email newsletters, they may come across an, uh, an error of some sort because we have reached our maximum number of subscribers. So we right now are working diligently uh, in order to find a uh, better uh, hosting uh, service for our uh, email notification system so that we can get that back on track. We also have, um, <coughs> I'm sorry. We are working with uh, the quarterly newsletter, the Clawson Highlights, as we must uh, remember. Um, I'm working with uh, Scott and Lisa from the uh, Parks and Recs uh, Department, and what we are trying to do is uh, just put you know that news back into the hands of the residents of Clawson, Michigan. Uh, we're trying to uh, get these back into the mailboxes so that uh, all of our residents know that um, all of our residents know about the uh, the upcoming events that are happening in the city. So we are trying to get the ball rolling with that, and we are looking for probably uh, publications to start going out uh, probably within the uh, mid mid April. So we're we're that's uh, that's what we're hoping for, and I'm pretty sure we're going to meet that deadline. Um, also, social media engagement. Now we have been a little bit stagnant. Um, of course, with our social media engagement in the past, so now uh, with platforms like Facebook, um, Instagram, um, I've, I've only made a couple posts so far, and uh, what I've noticed between um, maybe only two platforms alone that we have started to get over 80 uh, plus likes uh, per post. So that's a good thing, and maybe I, I want to say like uh, around like 100 plus impressions per post. So that is we're on the good right track with that. So basically, family friendly posts, um, city alerts, just something to get the word out there that hey, Clawson, we're paying attention to you. And um, last but not least, um, Nick had came up with the uh, suggestion. Uh, to come up with a uh, communication tool sheet. Now, this is an online sheet that, uh, I don't know if you have any copies, but this is an online sheet that uh, residents can uh, quickly gravitate towards, and they have a shortcut, a list of shortcuts in order to access city services. So if they need uh, to sign up for the no-knock registry, it's a link right there that they can just click right on, and they can instantly sign up to get to our Instagram, our Twitters, to get to uh, the uh, DDA. Whatever uh, link that they may need that uh, has something to do with the city service, they can access that right away. And uh, this is what I've basically done within the past uh, seven days. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone? Any words for Welcome to Clawson. No. Nope. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have consideration of approving the following consent agenda. Item A, minutes of the regular city council meeting held on Tuesday, March 5th, 2024. And item B, list of bills in the amount of $682,304.73. I move to approve the cons consent agenda as presented. Support. Michelle? Councilmember Shepard? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Binkowski? Yes. Mayor Milan? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Moffitt? Yes. Thank you. We've approved our consent agenda, and we'll move on to new business under item 9. And item number 9A is consideration of the application for waiver protecting local government retirement and benefits act, PA 202 of 2017, for retirement health benefit systems. Mr. Riker? Your motion, ma'am. Oh, sorry. 
Motion. I move the application for the waiver protecting local government's retirement and benefits for retirement health benefit systems be approved as presented. Support. Thank you. Now. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Annually, the city is required to file Form 5572 to comply with PA 202, which protects local government's retirements and benefits. At the time of filing with the Michigan State Treasury Office, MSTO, we incorrectly assumed that the actuarial determined contribution, ADC, was listed by the auditor in the annual audit report. The auditor did not have the actual report prior to filing the audit and thus were unable to list the ADC in the notes to the annual consolidation financial report. The actual report calculated the ADC was completed, pardon me, the actual report that calculated the ADC was completed on December 28th, 2023 after the audit submission to the state. This was not an issue at the time of filing but was brought to our attention by the state treasury upon their preliminary review. Absent the ADC information, the state placed us in a preliminary underfunded status, which is their action to prompt local governments to address these issues. We are not underfunded. This action was this action for the waiver simply allows for us to correct the administrative absence of information and indicates to the state that we have addressed the issue and shared this with our local governing body. This occurred last year, but under different circumstances, and we do not anticipate a repeat of this for next year. Failure to submit a wait and approve waiver will result in a determination of underfunded status for our municipality and will require a corrective action plan to the municipal to the municipal stability board for approval. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Okay, roll call please, Michelle. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Binkowski? Yes. Mayor Milan? Yes. Mayor Botan Moffitt? Yes. Councilmember Shepherd? Yes. Thank you. So we have approved the application for the waiver protecting local government retirement and benefits for retirement health benefit systems. And we'll move on to the next item, which is item 9B, consideration of a budget amendment to support an increase in staffing for the Department of Public Works for fiscal year 2023 and 2024. Would someone like to make a motion? Uh, Madam Mayor, I move the budget amendment to increase the Department of Public Works staff be approved as presented. Support. Mr. Ricker. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The need for increased DPW staffing was pre presented and discussed at the February 27, 2024 budget discussion between City Council and the Department of Public Works. The consensus at the end of the meeting seemed supportive to move forward with the hiring process. It was rationalized that the filling of these positions would have minimal impact on the current year's budget as filling them will likely occur with little time remaining in the fiscal year ending June 30, 2024. The Department of Public Works is requesting to increase staff with the addition of three full-time employees and one part-time employee. The cost per full-time employee, including wages and benefits, is $76,320, and the cost for the part-time employee is $30,730. The administration is requesting an amended budget increase to the general fund to increase expenditures by $14,516 and an amended budget increase to the water and sewer fund to increase expenditures by $18,215. This request supports numerous city council administrative approved goals and objectives. Okay. Anyone have any questions? Uh, no. Welcome. Oh, sorry. I guess, Mr. Riker, just to put on perspective, I mean, you're adding three and a half employees, basically, right? That is correct. And although the impact on this year's budget will be minimal because this fiscal year is winding down, it will have full impact next year. That is correct. And I believe so doing the numbers, it's around two hundred and fifty thousand dollars total correct. benefits. That sounds like a lot of money against the eleven million dollar operating budget until we realize that that is a significant part of our city's responsibilities is DPW. And I'm if you can refresh my memory, our staffing levels now are rather down from the past. Is that, is that correct. correct? I think yes. we're are we even restoring that old level, or at least maybe getting I want to say administratively, we're still falling short one administrative uh, support person in the office, DPW. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make that clear for the audience that mm -hmm. we didn't decide to, for kicks, hey, let's hire three and a half people and, you know, go at it. We're actually restoring some old levels for work that needs to be done. That is absolutely okay. correct, ma'am. Sir, pardon me. Hmm. Anyone else? Mr. Bringowski? I'd just like to say, go on the record say I'll be voting no on this because um, I'd like to discuss it more during the budget process and I'd hate to hire three and a half people and then have to get rid of them. 
if that case may be. So it's not that I don't support the DPW or support hiring these people. I just would rather have further discussions in the budget process. And, and to be fair, and I respect that, but to, to be fair, you were absent from the DPW presentation, and they I, did talk about it at length, and mm -hmm. that's why I'm supporting it, because of the case they made during that presentation. And just, just for, for those watching at home, <laughs> just to no. keep the discussion going. No, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. In fact, that they went to great lengths. The presentation was uh, um, uh, very uh, informative regarding this, so, yeah. Yep. Anyone else? Roll call, please, Michelle. Councilmember Binkowski? No. Mayor Milan? Yes. Mayor Potan Moffitt? Yes. Councilmember Shepard? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Thank you. We have approved the budget amendment to increase the Department of Public Works um, staff for fiscal year 23 and 24. We'll move on to our next item, which is item 9C, consideration of a budget amendment for the citywide closed circuit television and cleaning of city sewers for fiscal year 2023 and 2024. Would someone please make a motion? Madam Mayor, I move to the I move the to the budget amendment of $350,000 to the water and sewer fund for fiscal year 2023-2024 for closed circuit televising and cleaning as presented be approved. Support. Thank you. Mr. Raker. Thank you, Madam Mayor. My apologies for the additional two in the motion. Um, the need for citywide closed circuit televising and cleaning of the city sewers was presented and discussed at the February 27, 2024 budget discussion between City Council and the Department of Public Works. The consensus at the end of the meeting seemed supportive to move forward with this effort. The attached memo from Finance Director Mark Pollock explains that the city has a healthy budget surplus for the current year and is requesting that $350,000 be amended into this year's budget to support city wide CCTV and cleaning efforts. The total cost of the project is estimated to be $1.3 million and will take six to eight months to complete. The project will cross fiscal years as the city will be billed on a monthly basis. The working capital reserves within the water and sewer fund is over $3 million. This item directly supports the current year's city council administrative goals and objectives. Goal five, ensure a safe and com comfortable environment for everyone, and objective five, uh, consistent strategic investment in water sewer infrastructure. Mr. Rinkowski. Um, just, to, just to be clear, we're, we're simply amending the budgets here. This will certainly go out for public bids in an correct. open bid process. That is correct. All right. That, that was my concern, too. So I appreciate you, you raising that at the meeting. Um, I, I was supportive of getting an RFP, so I want to make sure that that RFP results will be presented to council for final approval, correct? That is correct. Okay. Then the other question I have is, so in the council packet, you, you, you were more specific about the healthy surplus that we have in the water and sewer fund. and. I know that we hear a lot about how our water rates are higher than anyone else's in the world. An exaggeration, but still. How do we get a healthy surplus in the water and sewer fund and say that our, you know, how do we bump that up against the concern that we have really high water rates? Well, you have a lot of infrastructure needs. And I don't believe that in the previous four years before I was here that many water or sewer infrastructure pro projects were conducted. Um, and since then, we did take on two additional projects that were projects of opportunity with the city of Royal Oak and the city of Troy in regards to Batter and Rochester Road, so which were both unforeseen additional um, expenditures on that water fund. So you're saying the, the super healthy surplus we have is because it hasn't been appropriately, not appropriately, but it hasn't been used for the purpose with which it was intended, in, in, which is fixing the sewers, and that's why we have that healthy balance. Is that the answer? I would argue that has, that's partially part of that situation, yes. It probably is the majority of it, quite honestly, because not much got accomplished in those four years. So... So is the intention to, after we camera it, to use up those funds to make the improvements and then over time 
there won't be that healthy surplus because we're more at a break even with our rates. Is that fair? Um, ideally, but I think that time is way down the road. So what will happen with the closed circuit TV is that will give us the, 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 the information that is currently lacking for our approach when it comes to roads, sewers, roads, water, and sewers. Um, that is the one thing we lack the most information on. And so we need to get that information so we can prioritize where to start first. Do, so do we know what portion of the water rates go into the water and sewer fund? I would have to ask the finance director if he could provide any insight on that without speculation. That's why he's here, right? Forgive me, but... Um, I'm catching you off guard, so I... No, yeah, the analysis that I've done since I've been back is that the exactly what Mr. Raker said, the surplus has been built over a number of years with the anticipation that we would utilize it for infrastructure um, and not much has been done. So we have a very healthy, you know, little over $3 million worth of working capital, which in the water and sewer fund is more important. We have $13 million of retained earnings, but most of that's in the ground. So the actual money we can spend for infrastructure, yes, there's a healthy surplus now. And the biggest reason for moving forward on this portion is we need to find out where the bad sewers are, so absolutely. But yes, your, your question being what part of the rates goes into surplus right in the last four years, quite a bit has. But with the anticipation that it was going to be used for something like this or for actual infrastructure. But yeah, we're always looking at where can we level off water rates we still have to build surplus to do some of this stuff, but again, part of the strategy is going to be uh, when we put a bond before you is how much of that water surplus are we going to use. And yes, I'd, I would prefer to use up all of it and keep rates low if that's, if that's the goal. I, yeah, that's kind of where I was going with, I mean, because like I said, people are always like, ah, the water rates, water rates. And and to, to say water rates are where they have to be and then also say we have this really healthy balance that is made up of part of the water rates seems a little talking out of both sides of our mouth. So I just, so, so is there, I guess just let's, I'll put that under our hat for when we talk about water rates next time and see how we can get more of a, equity between right. building up that water and sewer fund and where the rates stand is just the conversation I want to put out there. Okay. And I, I completely understood. And as we go through the budget process, that's always a consideration. The city did have a water rate study done three years, two years, three years, years ago. Yeah. And it did recommend healthy increases in the rates to build the fund for infrastructure for work. So it's there. And again, we went at, I would love to be able to say we can keep water rates where they're at and do all this work, but the reality is we have to keep the pass-through costs are always a big part of our rate increases, and the rates have been going up quite a bit more the last few years. But yeah, there's always a proponent or component of our rates that anticipates we're going to do work to the system to maintain it, to fix it. And as we know, as you saw at the presentation, we've got a lot of really old water main. We've got a lot of sewers that need work and that's what this portion is going to do but yes absolutely as part of our consideration when we set rates is you know we don't want to just continue to hammer and and build up this huge fund balance and then do nothing with it fair okay yeah. good just well a heavier mm -hmm. so <laughs> the pass-through rates i want to touch on that a little bit mm -hmm. so have they been increasing or has there been any significant decrease in the pass-through rates or the, where do we stand with that and again going back when I was here before, SACWA rates were, were moderate. I mean, they were moderated. They were very small increases, but they're coming back to, I want to say, is it four and a half? I think uh, Trevor just gave me the sheet from SACWA's recommendation uh, increase in water rates was four and a half percent. So there's generally somewhere in the three to five percent increases in rates. The one we have less control over, although uh, GLWA has really gotten involved, is the sewer rate because they've tried to fix those rates so they don't fluctuate so much with usage. And th those rates have gone up significantly over the last 15 years. Mm -hmm. But we do pass those through onto the users, and then we try and add our component 
in there to do the infrastructure work, if at all possible. And that's what we're trying to do. Is there any pushback regarding from us on the increases that are passed through? Or uh... Oh, yeah. There, there's always pushback from every community involved. There, okay. they, they, and they, they go to the point now where they have months of meetings to set the sewer rates. Okay. So they go through. It's a painstaking process. And, and going back to the GWK in the beginning, you know, everyone thought, wow, these rates are out of control. But I think they've proven with the GLWA's help that they're trying to rein those in and still maintain the infrastructure because that's been the issue. It's still extremely old infrastructure. Okay. So, so yeah, the pass-throughs are always a part of our component, but then the water rate study said, well, you need a resource building component as well, which we've been doing, but, you know, we don't, we don't always say, well, if they recommend a 10% increase, we might half that and do 5%. So, because, again, we understand the rates are impactful to everyone. Indeed. Okay. Well, thank you. Appreciate it. Um, yeah, just one question, Mr. Raker. So they'll be doing camera and closed-circuit television inspection of all the sewers, which is the vital first step in the whole infrastructure plan. Correct. I think one of our citizens and other citizens might have an interest is, would this video be available? I, I know how many people would call if I didn't interpret it necessarily, but would that be public information or something that professionals would prefer to keep closer to their vests? Quite honestly, I don't know why they would want to keep it close to their vest, but I think you probably have to go through the FOIA yeah. process. There may be some ways of getting... Um, they do. We do have some interactive capabilities, but I don't know if it would would include being able to like view your water main out in front. Um, but I'm, I'm confident through the FOIA process that if needed, it can be acquired. I was yeah. just thinking that perhaps Brandon would like to create some type of a exciting Clawson evening to bring residents together <laughs> and we have movies and popcorn and sewer <laughs> catastrophes. There's right? a cinema in the street video, right? There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's just always possibilities. It'd be like intermission. Awesome. Intermission. <laughs> we can make slime, but it could be so much fun. There's so many opportunities. Brandon, I'll talk yes. to you later. <laughs> Anything else? We'll go to a roll call, please. Michelle. Um, Councilmember Shepard. Yes. Councilmember Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Binkowski. Yes. Mayor Milan. Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Moffitt. Yes. Thank you. We have approved the budget amendment of three hundred and fifty thousand dollars to the Water and Sewer Fund for the fiscal year twenty twenty three twenty four closed circuit television and cleaning. We move on to item nine D. No, we do not move on to item nine D. We have removed item nine D. What? Yeah, we, yeah, did, we, did. we did. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes I know what I'm doing. Not a lot, but sometimes. <laughs> We're going to move on to item, item 9E. And item 9E is consideration of reimport, reappointment of Barb Hayes to the Historical Commission to an expired term of July 31st, 2023 to expire on July 31st, 2026. So move. Thank you. Support. Thank you. Any comments? Thank you. Roll call, please. Councilor Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Bankowski? Yes. Mayor Milan? Yes. Mayor Potem Moffitt? Yes. Councilmember Shepard? Yes. Thank you, um, Barb Hayes, for your service on our historical commission. We are thankful that you're willing to continue in your service. <clears throat> Item 9F is consideration of reappointment of Julie Martz to the historical commission to an expired term of July 31st, 2023, to expire July 31st, 2026. So moved. Support. Any comments? Roll call, please. Councilmember Binkowski? Yes. Mayor Milan? Yes. Councilmember Mayor Portan Moffitt? Yes. Councilmember Shepard? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Thank you. We have reappointed Julie Martz. Julie, thank you for your service to the Historical Commission. Uh, we appreciate your service. Moving item on to item 9G, uh, it's consideration of a nomination and appointment of Erica Klute Cuban to the Board of Ethics to an expired term of September 15th, 2023 to expire September 15th, 2026. Madam Mayor, I move the appointment of Erica Klute Cuban to the Board of Ethics to an expired term of September 15th, 2023 to September 15th, 2026 be approved. Support. Okay. Any... Comments, questions, concerns? Madam Mayor, Erica's a, a fantastic candidate. She's a, uh, an attorney, um, 
currently a Macomb County prosecutor. Uh, spent much time with um, uh, sub substance abuse cases. Uh, has spent uh, 10 years, I believe, or maybe it was eight, working with the Clawson Mavericks um, as, as a cheerleading coach. And her daughter has also participated as a cheerleading coach, I think, the previous few years. Um, absolutely fabulous candidate. And since this, um, since this uh, position has been languishing since September 15th, I would like to um, appoint Erica to the, K to the position. And I will note that I saw no other applicants in the, in the uh, packet um, that was distributed by the city clerk. Okay, I'm not sure what relevance that is, but thank you. Okay, well, oh, Mr. Ray, great. So to shed a little bit more insight on this, the city clerk found out that the incumbent did not have an active city um, uh, email that was she was relying the previous city clerk sent it to both her uh, personal civilian email and her city clerk or her city council or pardon me her board of ethics Clawson uh, email so when she contacted her she found out that hey no I, this is what was happening beforehand it was being sent to this other one because I'm having challenges and when we discovered that she had the conversation and she expressed her continued interest because she did miss the previous uh, ethics meeting. And I will say I served with Annie on the Planning Commission for a couple of years and um, she's very committed to the community. For those of you who follow, have you followed the Ethics Committee, you know that I, with, um, well, you know, people on this dais have decided that I needed attention. So I um, did have instances with the Ethics Committee and um, Annie's a fine, con Annie is a very competent, committed citizen as well. And my only concern about this is Erica's resume seems great. Annie's resume is also great. I really hate that we pitted people against each other tonight. That's my one concern. But. That's right. I can expand. I acted on the council member's request in good faith. He has the right to make that nomination. However, he spoke on behalf stating that he was he believed that she doesn't want to be, and, and that was not accurate at all. So when we and talk I, about trust and faith and governance, now I have to, I, I'm not looking to make a second guess any time a council member communicates with me that I have to verify this. But unfortunately, when the mayor called me, I think it was yesterday or this morning, uh, in regards to the agenda, you had questioned about that, and you said, did you have any communication from her? And I was like, you know, let me talk to the clerk about that. And then that's when we found out the problem at hand. So, yeah, and my question really was, did someone resign? Because I didn't yes, know, and yes. it could have been anyone, right? I know that. I, I guess and we I found didn't out, in fact, she, she did, did that no one spoke to her, and that yeah. she never mentioned anything about resigning. Right. And she wanted to be reappointed. And, and just, just, just to be clear, her her application for reappointment was not on file because it was not in the packet of Correct. application. Okay, I just want to make sure. And I just am pointing out to you that, that her email was not functioning either, which is what we found out. So, um, Mr. Shepard? It just, it's an unfortunate oh, circumstance. Um, I certainly you know, don't want to uh, you know, uh, vote against Ms. Klukubin, but at the same time, uh, knowing that uh, Ms. Fenton is also still interested in that, I think it, it's, for me, it's quite apparent as far as the direction that I'll be taking. Mm -hmm. But I, again, I, I, I don't know Ms. Cubbin, or Clue Cubbin. I, I do know Ms. Fenton. Uh, I had, had known her for quite some time, uh, both on the Planning Commission, as uh, you and I both served there, but also uh, in other areas as well. Anyone else? Let's have a yeah. Oh, oh, sorry. yeah, I guess this is just an unfortunate, awkward situation caused by a communication breakdown, which is most unfortunate. So I, I agree, I'm kind of kind of caught in conundrum myself. I've never met Ms. Cluton, did I say that right? <laughs> but I will say the fact she volunteered for the Mavericks for all those years says a lot to me. My son used to play in the Mavericks, and all those volunteers were excellent people, just really giving of themselves. Um, so just knowing that makes, gives me a real positive feeling about her. On the other hand, with Ms. Fenton, yeah, again, I've seen her in action, too. I'm 
pretty impressed with her. So, yeah, it's, it's a... It's a tough one. Maybe I'll just get out a coin here, but <laughs> well, I have a question then. Um, so when you so there was a call made to Miss Fenton today about whether she wanted to was it, be, it today, was it today or yesterday? Okay. And at any time did she say, No, wait, wait, let me put my application in so I can be considered too? I would have to defer to the city clerk. I will say her comment to me was um, first of all was the email issue that she had was which I was unaware of and that she said that um, she didn't know that it was expired. Um, I do th think that this um, council is aware of um, some um, issues with the boards and commission appointment dates and times. Um, it was something I've been working on since I've been in the, in the position. And um, so it is possible she was unaware that it was expired. Um, however, if you go back to the original meeting, it, it, it spoke to how many years the term was for. So uh, again, I'm not making excuses for that, but um, she was unaware that it was expired and still continued to wish, she wished to be on the board. Um, it just did not make it to last meeting because she was unaware of the meeting um, because I only emailed it to the city email, which I did not know was not working. So um, that was our conversation. And so you had a conversation letting her know that her term was expired, right? That was the nature of the conversation. Your term's expired. Sorry. And at no point did she say... Oh, no, she told me she was, um, she was completing the reappointment application. She was definitely interested in staying on the board. Okay. So, But she didn't get it over to you in time for this meeting today? No, we just spoke yesterday, so no. I, okay. I wasn't aware of uh, any issue until it came up before me yesterday okay. that, you know, there's a possibility that she may still want to remain on the board. It was just more of a follow-through to make sure that she was aware. And, and so it's nice that we have a bunch of people that want to be on the board, but we have one application in front of us and one person on the agenda today. And so... That's what we have to consider right now, whether or not, based on the application, what we have on the agenda, we want to appoint this person. And, and just to clear, clear up also, there is, um, if you look back at the email when I sent all the applications out, there are two other people interested in the ethics board um, it, that was sent out at that time um, that have not been considered because it is a nomination and appointment of the council. Correct. So those are sitting in, in the file as well. So there are some applications there. Um, like I said, Ms. Fenton did not, she wasn't aware that it was up for reappointment, so I do not have it in hand, but she did tell me she would forward it to me, so okay. I'm kind of waiting on that. All right. So we're voting on what we have in hand today. Okay. Roll call, please. Mayor Milan? No. Mayor Pro Tem Moffitt? Yes. Councilmember Shepard? No. Councilmember Anderson? No. Councilmember Binkowski? Yes. So that does not pass. Um, we'll move on to item number H, which is consideration of continued discussion on the draft fiscal year 2024-2025 City Council administration goals and objectives. Mr. Raker. Madam Mayor, I move to host discussion on development of the fiscal year 2024-2025 City Council administration goals and objectives. Thank you. Support. Thank you. Now, Mr. Raker. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Discussion on the coming fiscal year's goals and objectives have been commingled within seven meetings of the council to date. During the last council meeting, substantive progress was made, attached our updated goals and objectives for further consideration. Um, and as today, I provided you hard copy, sent it to you, email this afternoon. Basically, this is the list of our conversation and, and my rationalization for what is in front of you. I can go through it if you would like, Madam Mayor. Uh, sure. So Great. basically, per the approved evaluation process, we're supposed to have five goals. Last year we were making progress, and I didn't make us think about having six. So, it, so I think with this opportunity, though, we can go back to having five. And I think many of the ones from six and five, six just or five got um, kind of renamed to include the consensus on infrastructure. And then uh, six was infused to the, uh, I wanna say it was item, our goals two through six, two, I mean, pardon me, two through five. So within them, so in green you have uh, objective, under goal one, objective five was struck because it was removed by motion by council. Um, 
if you go down to uh, objective seven, I'm suggesting that we remove this because we believe we can still achieve this for this current fiscal year. If you move down to goal two, um, there's some substantive additions there. Uh, in conversations with staff, they wanted more representation for some of the services that they provide. So uh, I amended, I'm suggesting amending objective two and three um, to include uh, awareness of library, recreation, historic, and senior services. Uh, if you go down to objective five, that's in goal two. That was formerly goal six, objective three. If you move over to the one that was approved by council at the last meeting, it was the council had approved overhaul and approved the city's uh, city of Clawson website by March 2025. I'm suggesting that we refine that to review and improve the City of Clawson website as soon as possible. Um, and then objective seven, uh, that was develop an information campaign on the forthcoming ballot bond initiative regarding infrastructure, which is in goal five, which talks to infrastructure. Um, I brought, brought that up at the March 5th City Council meeting. If you go down to goal three, uh, all those are pretty much the same, uh, except with the removal, suggested removal of Objective 7, provide a workplace environment that supports healthy lifestyles. I'm suggesting eliminating that for concern of being intrusive and, just men and judgmental. Um, and then Objective 8 is uh, formerly Goal 6, Objective 2 within Goal 3. Uh, if you go on over to Goal 4, I'm sorry that that didn't look like it printed on the second page, but it is goal four at the top. Um, you have uh, the removal of goal f uh, of objective three under goal four, uh, which is um, the receive recognition from the GFOA. Um, this, myself and the finance director don't feel this is necessary anymore. Um, the former direct, former finance director wanted to, and rightfully so, wanted to pursue this accolade, um, and we, we're not, we don't believe it's necessary anymore. Um, so the suggestion is to remove it. And then if you move down to objective 11, that was formerly goal six, objective one. And then if you move down to goal five, basically it's a renaming. So improve infrastructure while creating a safe, comfortable, and sustainable environment for all. So. The one uh, lengthy approved council amendment, I, I'm suggesting that we refine it to simply be objective one, prepare a comprehensive and coordinated plan within the calendar year 2024 to address roads, sewers, and water mains within the city. Um, all the rest is basically making definitions and providing a, a deadline. Uh, objective two is approved ballot language for infrastructure ballot bond initiative. We discussed that at the fifth March 5th meeting. Uh, objective three was formerly the old goal five, objective one. Objective four was formerly old goal five, objective two, and so on as you go down the list. And then objective 10 is, um, well, pardon me, objective nine is actually the former goal six, objective four, and then objective 10 is, uh, as written, produce a plan for high-speed charging station in at least one parking lot. So um, I figure if we have discussion tonight and at the next council meeting, uh, the intent would hopefully to have these finalized for your, your approval uh, at the April 16th meeting. Thank you. We appreciate your um, goal to not be intrusive or judgmental. Very critical to all of our success here. Mr. Benkowski. Madam Mayor, um, I just wanted to make sure the, this was not uh, this was not included in the agenda packet. Was it? it was updated in the agenda packet? That's correct. It was it was updated in the agenda packet because the the agenda packet I received doesn't have this. The agenda packet that's online is updated, oh, and it okay. does say updated. Okay. And all that information is but basically the, just a reconfiguration of what you. But, but the one you emailed me on Thursday does not have all these changes. That's correct. However, I okay. did email it to you today and on the rest of the council. Okay. Um, I, frankly, I, I find, you know what, the, 
changing it to five goals and shuffling some things around, I have no problem with. Um, completely neutering the the um, goal for infrastructure that we approved two weeks ago, I do have a problem with and uh, would vote against. So I'll just say that. And but as far as you know, a lot of the other things, I don't have any big issue with. Uh, I would concur with Mr. Binkowski that the language that was voted on by the council and approved for that to be totally thrown away, I think is frankly disrespectful. I do, I would like to see um, under goal two, objective one, I would like to see that uh, um, reworded to say, ensure effective, meaningful, and responsive communication with the community. So I'd like the word responsive added to that. So that can be something that we're measured against. And I would also suggest that objective one in goal one be um, rewritten somehow to uh, acknowledge that the majority of that work is done by the DDA, so something like facilitate and support the DDA in its efforts to attract or something to, to just acknowledge that a lot of that falls under the DDA would be my inputs on those. Um, let me see, sure, I have another note, just a second. Sorry. Um, must be it because I can't find my other page. So that's all I got. Okay, well, I'd like to interject on that one. Um, attract, encourage, and retain a mixture of robust businesses and development to the city is not just managed through the DDA. It's a cooperative effort between the DDA, local businesses, Chamber of Commerce, and many other entities. So to call out one only, I don't think is fair. So, Let's include them all. Well, it's really not necessary, though, because they're the... The city is the conduit for all of those organizations. They are active. They should be active in each of them and representative for each of them. So it's kind of implied, I think. Um, help me out here. DDA is a defined entity within the city. I think there's key boundaries. There are businesses outside the DDA. So, yeah, I would agree DDA is a, is a key component, but, yeah, I don't see the need to call them out in this manner either. And they have to cooperate with the Building Safety Department and all of the other entities within the community. So even though they do they do manage some of these things on their own and, and, and they're extremely important to our development, they're not in, independent of that. And our city, has to, our administration, has to be responsive to all of the entities equally. So that's why I would just not want to call that out on its own. Because there's business development in other areas of the city that exactly. are not in the DDA. But the DDA is not under the purview of the city administration, and that's why I feel the city, like... The DDA is very involved by the city administration. It's in, Without the it's city in, administration, the DDA really does not have much ability. It's separate, though, and that's why I think that it's important to call out the cooperation and support sh supporting it. Just my opinion. You can disagree, but I'm just, that's what how if, I'd like to see it rewarded. What if we were to include, uh, a, a, through the cooper cooperative efforts of the DDA in chamber, something to that effect? I'd love it. I, we can probably put something in there that is not limiting, but is also inclusive. It's I, fair. I don't, I'd like it. I don't have a, any fine. issue yeah. with challenging that. That's fine. Okay, I do have a question. They said that the infrastructure was watered down. What, what's what's missing? That I mean, I'm just reading what's in green here. The what we made a motion and voted on is what he has entirely redacted from goal one. So that such that roads are fair, better level, all that stuff that's redacted is the exact verbiage that we voted that he proposed and we voted on and approved at the last council meeting. Unanimously. Unanimously. Okay. Thank you. Okay, hold on, I guess I told me, <laughs> what you showed me there, again, I didn't get that either. Yeah, it's on your desk. It's on your desk. They left it for us on your desk. Here it's, it's right there. Here I've got what came last Thursday, and here I've got right. the, a whole I'm, lot more green here than right. there is here. So if you look at what is there with the memo, mm -hmm. And if you Jack flip Pratt to the Hall. second page. Yeah. Okay. Right. Well, I mean, that's, that's kind of my point. Last Thursday looked great. 
No, actually, it didn't look Tuesday, good. Tuesday, <laughs> Tuesday <laughs> afternoon <laughs> looks a little more, you know. Well, let's see. The most recent one, objective, prepare a comprehensive and coordinated plan within calendar year 24 to address roads, sewers, water mains within the city. Okay, fairly brief. I got one here. Prepare a comprehensive and coordinated plan within calendar year 24 to address roads, sewers, water mains within the city that all roads are fair and better. Okay. All right. I simply just boil it down to get to better. the point. Yeah, so, possible. in my mind, though, as a council, as the body, mm. we voted on this, and we agreed to include it, and therefore, it should be included. And, and in full disclosure, if this stays not included in the way that the council voted on it, my vote will be no for the motion that's on the floor. I wouldn't support there, these goals. There is no motion on the floor. We're simply just discussing. Well, I will not approve. I when we do go to vote to approve these goals, my motion, would, my answer would be no okay. because. And that's, can I finish? Please, please. The Hello council. Everyone. If everyone asks for permission to speak, I will give you permission to speak, and then no one will talk over each other, and it'll be so fun. Let's try that. Okay. Would you like to speak, Miss Moffitt? I would like to continue the, com the comments that I was making, and that is the council voted on this specifically worded goal. Like, I can't go into my, uh, my boss's office and say, hey, guess what? You know that thing that you asked me to do? Well, I just decided that I don't like that thing, and so I'm just not going to acknowledge your, your direction to me, and I'm going to just discount it. And that's what redacting the approved language that the council approved seems to me. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, sir. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, Madam Mayor. It was simply a refinement. It is simply a suggestion. I have, it's not that I, I, I basically line that out I, and I pointed it out what I am suggesting. Now, that one is kind of overbearing and exceptionally descriptive unnecessarily, which is why I'm suggesting that it be refined. If the council doesn't want to, I'm okay with that. So you have in here within calendar 2024, I don't know if that was, was that original from before? It was. Yeah. Okay. It seems like what we're losing is a lot of elaboration of the details. One key thing is the, the, the time frame, the 2035, that got lost. Perhaps we should put that back in. All the rest, I think, is just extra language that I think we don't need to have. I'm sorry, Mayor. <laughs> oh, let me, do I, should I do eeny meeny? I don't know who had their hand up first, sorry. He Mr. Did. Riker, okay, Mr. Benkowski. Madam Mayor, um, I will respectively suggest that the devil is in the details, and that is why I worded this objective and this goal so with certain details. And what I, what I want and what I think that the people of Clawson want is a very comprehensive plan to get our infrastructure fixed and done in the most efficient manner. And that is why I used the words that I used. I did not just throw in flowery language to, to, to make it, you know, more wordy, to include some nickel words or so forth. You know, I, I, I set other goals that are very brief and, and, and um, that we also voted on that were, you know, one sentence long, and so I would I would oppose any um, attempt by this board to um, neuter, water down, whatever words you may have for this goal that we approved unanimously two weeks ago. Uh, may I ask? Uh, I would like to ask a question. I also approved the agenda today unanimously, and you changed that. So, so so let's say. 
this is a brief statement, right? It's been read several times. I'll not read it again. It's a very brief statement that encompasses many things. And then the items that come beyond, the ones you identified yourself, are we limiting this goal to just those items that are identified? Because if that's the case, then we're cutting ourselves short. If we leave it brief, then anything can apply. And the one thing I don't, I, mean, I didn't like this last week when we talked about it, last meeting when we talked about it, the whole water main thing to one a year, because I don't understand how that's even possible unless we're going to ignore them if we get more than one. I mean, there's no way we can control that. So that's, it just doesn't make sense. So if we have a blanket statement and it is all encompassing, is that not better than a specific statement that we say we can do a gotcha on and say, oh, you didn't do this, but they did all of these other things. Like that makes no sense to me. Brevity is sometimes really good for us. And it is a better way to meet goals and to identify them. Mr. Raker, you had your hand up? Yes. I mean, to your point about the specificity of, like, of, one, of, of one water break per year, why not zero? Like, I mean, they're both probably equally unattainable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, and I think we talked about that as far as the one per calendar year. I, I don't know how we achieve that. It's, it's, I don't even say it's not unattainable, but I think it's Herculean to the point where, okay, what do we have to do for the, our citizens in order to make sure that that happens, right? How much are we going to make sure that, that uh, is there enough funds in order to prevent that from happening? But I, we can't because we don't control the, the items that make the water main breaks occur. No, I'm saying, yeah, exactly. So it's the fact we that we can't control that. So that's just, it's, it's just on a table. What would it require, right? I mean, it'd have to be made out of tungsten and it's something that, you know, will never you know, fail at some point in time. It's something it, we it's can do. It's not, it. it uh, Mr. Brankowski, Councilman Brankowski, to stand up first. Madam Mayor, we, we, we do control what causes water main breaks. And we that's, don't. Excuse me. We don't, though. Excuse me. It is my turn to speak. Oh, you okay. just acknowledged me. I did acknowledge you. We do control. We do quality construction, quality materials, quality repairs to our infrastructure. We can limit the amount of water main breaks we have. If not then why make any repairs at all? I, may I please call upon one of our DPW experts from the back of the room to just give us a brief expose on what causes water main breaks? Because I just think it's really important to understand that it's not just the materials. There are other things, and I will not bore you with my knowledge of this, because you gave a really great presentation a couple of weeks ago that you weren't present for, Mr. Binkowski, and you perhaps would understand this better had you been there. But please. Thank you. So Sorry. My name is Ryan McDonald. I'm the assistant superintendent at the DBW. Um, to your point, there are things that we can control, and that is the age of the pipe. We can put new pipe in the ground, but most factors that cause our water mains to break, especially in this climate, is exactly that, the climate, the cold weather, things that we cannot control. So climate, pressure, um, excavation, other people hitting our lines, these are all causes of water main breaks. So we have 55 years of data. The least we've ever had is eight. And that's happened, I believe, four times. The most is 28. So we're trending down, but that's also things that we cannot control. Yeah. That would be me asking a goal of council that within the next calendar year, I would like you all to walk on the moon. Pass. It's not... <laughs> it's not something that we can control. Yes, sir? I am fine with amending with the number of water main breaks, but I don't see that we need to neuter the five other lines of details. So will you be limiting, will you be limiting the progress on this to those five line items that you will propose, that you have proposed. Will that be the entity of what this objective will be? Will there be no other items that will enter into this objective to make this objective be successful? Mr. What? Aker? Mr. Aker? Were you, yes. I wasn't sure if you were talking to him or... No. Okay. So part of the goals, they should be reasonable and attainable in... As we had from the brief, we have roughly ability to borrow $55 million, which is not going to address every issue we have in the city. So for us to say 
that we're going to have this by the end of the calendar year as it was previously written, I'm not going to be able to, to probably develop that plan to address all of those. We will, we have the top, I want to say, is it 35 projects that we've 39. briefed? 39 projects that were briefed at the, the discussion with DPW. Excluding sewer. Excluding sewer, correct. So what we have to f further refine is the miscellaneous concrete program, which we would then do to help bring those other areas that are outside large projects along through the miscellaneous concrete road repair program. Now, will that get done in this calendar year? It'll get improved. I don't know if it'll get completed. Mr. Binkowski. Madam Mayor, I will kindly uh, refresh everyone's memory that the, that the goal that I proposed and that we all voted on unanimously talked about creating a plan to fix these things by 2035, not one year, 10 years. I wanted a 10-year long-term comprehensive plan, not a, oh, well, what can we do this year? This is what I wanted, and this is what we all voted for. And if we want to change it, you guys are welcome to change it. I'll vote against it. So we can discuss it, you know, ad nauseum if you want. But, um, yeah. but um, you know, I, I said that I want the roads at a fair or better level. Um, aging sewer lines are replaced. Uh, we, can, we can fix the water main breaks, numbering one per calendar year. Fine. But by the year 2035, then I say the word coordinated means that the plan should address water main and sewer sections simultaneously when roads are repaired. These are important things to me, and I think they're important things to Clausen, and that's why I do not want to make a wholesale deletion of these words. Okay, thank you, Mr. Raker. It's not a wholesale deletion. It's a wholesale summation in brevity. And that is what I think is important so that we can achieve these goals and also have a consistent message. Because the one thing that we do need to do if we do a ballot initiative is do hopefully an education campaign. And if we can't kind of come to some kind of middle ground as far as messaging concerns, then we're going to have a very difficult challenge as far as getting the rest of the community on board. Okay. Can I make a comment? Yeah. <laughs> so AEW put together something back in 21. It's been updated. We have an estimated $177 million worth of infrastructure work to do. We put in front of uh, council $62 million worth of projects excluding sewers, and we have the ability to borrow $55 million. So you could have 30 years and we're still not going to hit that. Sure. But you can make improvements. Right? Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So you said, if I heard you right, generally each year you have anywhere from eight, I think your lowest number was eight, eight. break, yeah. and your worst was like 28? 28. Okay. So presumably after 60-some million dollars worth of improvements, that number will go down. We presumably. Would we would like to think so, but uh, we have a lot of 1920s pipe in the ground. Our 1965 pipe seems to be... Problematic. Yes, you, you mentioned that in the presentation. Yeah. Yes. Uh, again, the 20 stuff was built, you inherited that it was built before you were born. The yeah. 60 something, uh, I think we're a little contemporaneous with that. But yeah, in essence, you, you're, we expect your activities bring improvement. Absolutely. You're uncomfortable quantifying it to one per year. Because there's only one parameter of the top six that we control. Sure. Thank you very much, Mr. McDonald. Appreciate you. Okay, are we still discussing? Or are we have we wrapped up our discussion? So just to try to button it up as far as the parameter on the one per year. So if that was to be changed, fine. Be, all right. Is there a way that you would like to finish that sentence without having? I'll think about it and I'll come back. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Raker? So there doesn't necessarily seem to be an issue with the goals as they are presented right now. Goals. Now, within the objectives, I mean, within the goals, there are some concerns with the objectives. 
I have under goal one, objective one, we'll add some verbiage for DDA and chamber inclusion and cooperation of some sort. Um, there hasn't been any discussion on the removal uh, that we're suggesting of the age friendly, because so, we're going to believe we're going to get that done for this year. So that being said, that one's kind of buttoned up. Good to go. All right. Um, under goal two, objective one, add responsive. We can do that. The objective number six, that is green and yellow, there hasn't been any discussion on that as far as overhauling the change to review and improve. If I may, I think we have someone here that can facilitate that, whereas we didn't before. That's correct. Yeah. Mr. Markowski. As far as I'm concerned, we should leave the by March 2025 date. So we have a hard date, so we know you know, when we can go back and look and say, oh, look, it's been done. And, and that will be coinciding with um, uh, Mr. Raker's review next year. I can I mean, agree with that. As soon as possible. I would hopefully sooner. Sure. Hey, <laughs> we can do it tomorrow. Great. But. But, but are you not concerned about the verbiage on this? Review and improve. So review means to look at. And improve is subjective. So if we're talking about this is going to be, someone is going to be measured on this goal for um, their performance, that doesn't work. Is it um, quick engagement? I'm curious as far as, yeah. There are some functionality problems that we can work out with our current configuration on the website that we've already started to uh, work on and analyze with Brandon. I think we'll be able to fix them when it comes to the search engine, the location of certain documents. We're going to make it much more user-friendly, which I believe that we'll be able to do, again, with the current makeup of how the website looks. So design-wise, I think we'll be able to maintain that. But when it comes to the user function and the ease of finding things on the website, we'll certainly be able to do. And I think we're... We've already started doing that in, in his first five days here, and we'll continue doing that. You know, whether it's as soon as possible or March 25th, we're going to be consistently making upgrades and changes to the website, regardless. My concern is, it was just mentioned, it will be used for a review a year from now, and I, I don't want anything. What I don't like about this list, and I didn't like in the very beginning, was it is not supposed to be a tick list of responsibilities for someone to perform and then perhaps be judged against. It is supposed to be goals, which are broad statements of areas that we will address. And I feel that it's we've gotten away with it on a lot, and I'm just concerned that people may want to utilize it not for what it's intended. And I don't want to see that happen later on because of verbiage. Mr. Riker? And those are the two specifics where it starts, I believe, crossing the line of micro into micromanaging, like, hey, we're going to set this date. Well, these are for the year, so the date is for the fiscal year, which ends June 30th. Then I propose, instead of having March 25th, spe specify that by the end of the fiscal year. We can, it, we can change the date at the end of the fiscal year 2025. doesn't bother me at all. But, it's, it's kind of implied because they're the FY24-25 goals. Okay. But, but to the extent that not every goal is achieved, um, it sets a standard bar that this is, this is it's not open-ended. Things like, you know, improve the overall appearance of the corridors. It's too, very open-ended. This one is, is a very tangible, important one that we can put parameters around, so why not put parameters around it? Because they're supposed to be more broad in nature. I, you know, that's a philosophical discussion, um, and I'm kind of done with this whole thing, but I, in my mind, goals are, should be quantifiable and achievable, whether or not you re achieve them, yes or no, that's in, in my experience, that's how goals are written for the employees that report to me and the goals that my bosses have always written for me, but that's obviously not everyone's uh, objective here. 
So, you know, I think that goals should be quantifiable and achievable and determination of whether or not it's met and not just all open end and fuzzy. So if we can have one that's maybe quantifiable and achievable, let's let's go for it. Let's do it. It's quantifiable by the fact that it has an end date of the fiscal year. Correct. And it's going to it's going to be something that is ongoing because we're going to have to maintain and update whether it's refreshing the content, maintaining the links, updating the attachments. It's it's something that these are guiding guiding aspirational goals for the organization. I, and if you want to cre create a tick list, uh, then I will continue to resist that. I And I will continue to say that we don't want a bunch of aspirational goals for our city. We need tangible, concrete goals of things that we want accomplished. And that's been my objection to this list of goals from the beginning. Um, but frankly, I'm... You know, I've said my piece over and over again, and there's nothing but resistance on getting quantifiable, achievable goals. They want to be aspirational. So aspirational they will be. I, 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 I'm done. <laughs> Are we all in agreement as to the date, end of fiscal year, which is? 30 June. Let's just say it, put it down, and be done. We all seem to have agreement on the time frame. And understanding that any plan he submits for infrastructure will have to be revised over time. I think we can all agree with that. Sorry. <laughs> I wasn't just speaking rhetorically. I'm saying I'm the, the, a plan and a goal are different things, right? Sure, a plan for infrastructure mm -hmm. is going to have to be revised, but the goal of having it achieved. Goal doesn't change. Exactly. Right. Fair enough. Mr. Raker? Yes, ma'am. I was going through previously if we when we stopped off at objective six. So review and improve the city of Clawson website as soon as possible to be replaced by review and improve the city of Clawson website by June of 2025. Question mark. Seeing no I would suggest that it sounds like we're, 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 we're finally in agreement on that then. <laughs> So then if we move down to goal six, um, there didn't seem to be any issue with eliminating the healthy lifestyles. Um, if we go to goal four, uh, any discussion about the recognition of the GFOA award? Okay. If we move down then to... Number five, any issue with the way goal five, improve, in structure, improve infrastructure while creating a safe, comfortable, and sustainable environment for all? Okay. And then so everything else minus objective one, everyone seems to be in agreement on. Okay. Yeah. So then on objective one, we want to remove the number for water main breaks so such that all roads are at a fair or better level. All roads are fair but aging sewer lines are replaced. How about this? Water main breaks are reduced year over year. Again, can't necessarily guarantee that. I mean, that's the I mean, it's great, but you can't guarantee it. Because the quality of what you build is only one variable. Like this this winter was very mild, probably very few water. Free. If we get a very cold winter, it could wreak havoc on the system. We can't guarantee it, but it's a goal to strive for and it's part of a 10-year plan and I'm not saying that it you know what are we going to do when we come back here at 2035 and say oh well maybe they maybe things aren't that great but if we strive for the goal to reduce water main breaks year over year I think that is something that the city the people of the city of Clausen would appreciate because 
They don't like water main breaks. They don't like having to flush out their water system. They don't like having reduced pressure on days at a time. So that's why I, I am suggesting that we, we make it a goal to reduce the water main breaks. I'm certainly not going to say my goal is to increase water main breaks <laughs> or keep water main breaks level. Right. I want to reduce them. How about address water main breaks and conditions? Because we can address them. We can't guarantee we can reduce them. We can, if they have the plan, they've, if we fund the plan they put forward, I'm sure the trend should be downward, but we can't even guarantee year over year. What if we that's put my concern. Sorry. It, sorry. Well, <laughs> I think I, it, the objective is to improve the robustness of the system so that it can carry on for more than whatever the lifespan is through the warranted period. There's got to be something specific that when something's put in the ground that, okay, it's going to last a certain period of time, right, whatever that is. Do we know when we put in a water main or a sewer how long it's supposed to last? Do we have any guarantees? Performance on that? guarantee on that? Yeah. I'd have to inquire specifically with AEW on that. Okay. Our professionals in the back are shaking their head. No. <laughs> yeah. There's none. It goes in the ground and uh, cross your fingers, right? Yeah. Well, I mean, <sighs> external variables. Yeah, I know. That's a, right. it's, yeah. Let's okay. put it this way. The, the, the people who put in our water mains in the 1960s, I'm sure they assume they were doing the best job possible, at least most of them. But we found out that for some reason... Water mains from the 40s and the 50s are actually better than those in the 60s. Something went wrong. If you had time, I could share with you the story of two, I-275 and what went wrong. Another story for another day. So, yes, these people, we expect them to make their best effort to improve the infrastructure, but, yeah, to, to again, I, I know what you're saying. You would like to be a little more specific, something beyond aspirational. <coughs> I don't know we can do that. Is it true to say that if we don't address our sewers at all, we will have an increase in water main breaks? Water main and sewers, I don't think there's a direct correlation, no. So if we don't address the infrastructure at all, we will have an increase in water main breaks. Because we were told that their water main breaks are a um, product of the fact that it was from the 1920s, and it's old, and it's not correct. So I would suggest that the philosophy behind the suggestion that the wording be changed that to reduce them year over year is to the extent that doing nothing increases the probability that we have water main breaks, then the philosophy is that fixing the system so that it's more up to date and in good shape would suggest that the opposite effect would happen. And so the philosophy behind the statement to reduce water main breaks would be because we are addressing the infrastructure. Would that be where you were, the mindset of that suggested wording came from? Mr. Minkowski? Yes, that's the idea is that if we fix things, it will be better. So, and we will have less water main breaks. So, so that's the well said. Implies <laughs> like that. Yeah. Totally agree. <laughs> like that. And Man, that's Mary. the reasoning behind those that wording. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. In an effort to make progress, can I suggest the following way forward? If if council is comfortable with the five goals, just the goals. Would we want to vote on them and make the approval so that we can, and you can say, <coughs> approve the draft goals as presented? And then I've noticed that goal three <coughs> and goal four have no issues as far as the objectives as they've been presented. And then we could approve those goals, those objectives within those. And then I can bring back to you a refine and smooth the addition the additional changes suggestions from what's been discussed here and we're we're moving the ball down the field and we have in the next council meeting 
and and then maybe we'll maybe we'll be there. So if, if anyone's interested in making a motion to approve those, <coughs> to at least move it forward. Glenn's thinking. Yeah. Um, it's just the goals only, not the objective. Yeah, exactly. So, um, Madam Mayor, I move that we approve our goals as presented and discussed with an opportunity to review objectives at a future date. The next council meeting, yes. I support. Mr. Brinkowski? I would suggest that we don't make any changes right now and let let Mr. Raker come back and and put a and put a um, his thoughts together as to these goals that per our discussion and then we can vote on them next week because there's a lot of markups that perhaps a lot of people haven't seen um, before this meeting even though they were amended over you know at some time between Thursday and now so and so I would be more comfortable voting on it next week Anyone else? Well, I think as far as we'll still have that opportunity to review the objectives. I, right? Yeah, I guess I, I guess I misunderstand what. Yeah, your what we're is. saying is that these goals are firm in what they're presented as the objectives themselves. We can have further discussion on. Oh, just the just the the five top line goals. Yeah, yeah. Fine, I'm sorry. Well, or you can, and you could expand it to include what, what well, were the items could, that are kind of set. So we don't have so to do we, this again with all of them? Yeah, and we, we, we right. can make a second motion on that, I think, just for specificity. Okay. I'm just a suggestion. Yeah, no, I, I if someone would like to make that. Well, we have a motion on the table. Yes, sir. I, I was just curious if you want to amend that. Amend I, that I'm motion? good as it is for mine, but if it's. Okay, then um, let's amend. We can amend that motion to include. The oh. objectives from. Goal three and four be approved. Okay, as you can say, and you can say draft. So there's still some wiggle okay. room if you want to amend it to say draft, and that way those five goals and then those objectives within goal three and four are move forward. Finalized. We have minimal work on one and two, and maybe we'll butt a little more heads on goal five, but we'll see. Well, can we say approve three and four, and then also approve one and two with um, the addition of the verbiage of making a robust response, right? Like, can we be specific? Because they're very small changes, and then we have four of them yeah. done. I was just not including that just so that the council had a chance to review okay. the, the language. Either way, works for me. So. Okay, so that's your amendment. That is my amendment. Okay. So, so then four. we need a second. A support. I'll support. Okay. okay. And a, a roll call if we don't have any more conversation. Discussion. Sorry, this is a discussion topic. No more discussion, Michelle. <laughs> Mayor Pro Tem Moffitt. No. Councilmember Shepard. Yes. Councilmember Anderson. Yes. Councilmember Binkowski. No. Mayor Milan. Yes. Thank you. So we have just. Um, that was the amendment. Oh, yeah, the amendment. Oh, yeah, right. The goals. <coughs> so now, what are we doing? I'm so uh, You're approving, approving goals. the five goals and the objectives under a goal three oh, and four. Which is what I thought we just mm -hmm. did. Yeah. Okay. No. Madam Mayor? Yes, sir. I'd prefer not to approve um, goals without objectives because the objectives are all where the details are. So. To me, that's, you know, you've, you've just deleted everything in a way. And yes, we may come back to it next meeting, but we may not. So I would rather not approve these goals as is and do it when we have all the objectives in front of us and voted on it at one time. Duly noted. We have a motion in a second? So, really? Just for clarity, I think it was agreed to upon to put draft goals and objectives in front of 
in okay. front of that yep. just for. Okay, Michelle. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Binkowski? No. Mayor Milan? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Moffitt? No. Councilmember Shepard? Yes. Okay. Thank you. We can move on from this topic. Yes, ma'am, please. Great. Uh, we'll move on to the next item, which is consideration of a request for a special meeting for the purpose of the fiscal year. Did I miss one? No, we got rid of it. We're nice. On I, yeah. Oh, okay. Consideration of a request for a special meeting for the purpose of the fiscal year 2024 and 25 budget presentation on Tuesday, April 23rd, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Madam Mayor, I move to approve the request for a special meeting for the purpose of fiscal year 2024-2025 budget presentation on Tuesday, April 23rd, 2024 at 7.30 p.m. Support. Any conversation on this? No, thank you, Michelle. Roll call. Councilman Binkowski? Yes. Mayor Milan? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Moffitt? Yes. Councilman Shepard? Yes. Councilman Anderson? Yes. Thank you. We're here on the 23rd of April to discuss 2024-25 budget. You know, that'll be fun. We will move on to, oh, yes, sir. For your awareness, it'll be in the community room because Planning Commission has an already scheduled meeting here. Okay, great. Um, item number 10 is old unfinished business. We have none, so we'll move on to item number 11, which is public comments for items not on the agenda. Anyone for items not on the agenda? Very good answer. Moving on to the city clerk's report. Michelle? Thank you. Um, I, just to give an update on uh, boards and commissions, I know um, we've already discussed that briefly tonight, but I wanted to let you know that we do um, have the one expired term on Board of Ethics. Uh, the Blair Memorial Library Board, we have um, three terms expiring within the next three months. Um, or, or, I'm sorry, one term expiring in three months. So I, typically we give you a six-month span, but because it's closer than six months, I changed it to three months. So she, we just have one opening there that will be expiring in, in the next three months. Um, Planning Commission, there's no openings, uh, but we will have five terms expiring in December of this year. Um, Compensation Commission, we still have two vacant positions open. Um, as far as I know, there's no interest um, in that. We have no applications on file. The DDA, um, we still have a vacant position, um, two expired terms. And then we have three that will expire by October of 24. Historical Commission, we have um, uh, the two that we've appointed tonight moving forward. So I think that they'll be full. And then the Recreation Board has no openings. Um, we do have one that will be expiring in two months. Um, of a reappointment uh, of an appointment that filled an expired not an unexpired term the traffic and safety board there's no openings and then zoning board of appeals we have just the one um, that is expired and I know there's an interest um, in that um, ZBA member coming back and so we're waiting on the reappointment application to bring it forward to you yeah. and then just to let you know on the compensation commission I have reached out to the three that we do have on there on that board currently and I'm trying to get a quorum so that we can have a meeting. Um, I haven't heard back from one of the members yet to, to see if the date is good. Um, however, we're hoping to move forward with that. Um, I've got it tentatively set for April 1st um, to review the council and mayor's um, you know, compensation. So that's all I have. Matt. Does that carry over? Because I thought there's an end date to when they have their uh, compensation. It's supposed, to be, uh, it's supposed to be every odd year. Yeah. So it should have happened last year. Yeah. Um, so we're following the last um, determination that's on file okay. um, with, for lack of a new one. Yeah. Um, but, you know, and, and it could come up to a point where, you know, if the council doesn't accept a determination, then we would stay with what's been approved, which would be the last one. So um, going forward, we will present the facts that we have um, to the, the board and um, they'll make a recommendation and it'll come back before you. Thanks, Michelle. <coughs> Moving on, no city attorney's report tonight, and we'll go to the city manager's report. Mr. Raker. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Earlier this month, I provided council a memo with a proposed version two of the budget timeline. Um, in it, I'm requesting <coughs> your availability for budget workshops if necessary. Um, you will soon see a traffic detour disruption in regards to the forthcoming batter water main installation. DPW has ensured that locally impacted residents have been informed. And also, as a final reminder for the Clawson Police Department's Bullathon being held this Friday, March 22nd, starting at 5.30 at Astro Lanes. Depending on your questions, that's my city manager's report. 
I have one question about the April um, special meeting. How will that be recorded and broadcasted if it's going on at the same time as the planning commission meeting? They have the assets to do both. So two different Zooms on at the same time? Yeah, so just like when the uh, workshop was held at the library, there's a planning commission meeting at that same time. So we have two avenues on YouTube to share both live meetings. So we'll, we'll work it out with Merge Live to make sure both are available to, to the public. Cool. Any other questions? Thank you. City Council comments, Mr. Brinkowski. None for me today. Ms. Moffitt. I got nothing. Thank you. Mr. Anderson. No comments. And Mr. Shepard. No, no comments. And I would just like to say thanks to everyone for um, participating today. We hashed a lot out. Uh, happy spring. I know it doesn't look like it outside, but I think by the calendar it's today or tomorrow or yesterday or something. But I don't really believe it because it really doesn't seem like spring. Oops. But it is also um, a really joyous time of year for many people as they're celebrating. Their many holidays are all converging at the same time. So um, happy Holy Week or whatever you're celebrating right now. Hope you have a great um, have a great holidays. Check out the website. There's a lot of activities going on in the next week or two that have to do with Easter egg hunts and Easter dinners and stuff like that. So if you want to get engaged with the community, there's opportunities out there. So that's it. Anyone? Uh, Madam Mayor, Matt. move we adjourn. Support. Roll call, please, Michelle. Mayor Bo Time Moffitt? Yes. Councilmember Shepherd? Yes. Councilmember Anderson? Yes. Councilmember Binkowski? Yes. Mayor Milan. Uh, yes, and uh, enjoy a happy Easter, everyone. Thank you. <laughs>